Go. You recording? You recording? You recording? Yeah. This is lap weld setup 101. So you've got a couple pieces of test material here. I've asked that you clear the mill scale off of those. We're going to lay one over the top of each other and weld them together. Lap welds are very common. One of the three common types. Lap welds, butt welds on edges, and a T weld are the three most common. What I'm going to encourage you to do is the following. Not only do I want you to weld them together, but I want you to uh, fasten them down to the table or fixture them is the technical term. And I also want you to tack weld in a couple places before you full weld, just to get you in the habit of those techniques. Vice grips, I have a video on this, but hey, here's the free vice grips 101. This knob on the backside turns in and out, and that controls the tensioning of the jaws or how tight they'll be. You only need to clamp this in one place in order to hold it, but you're gonna get this tensioning set up. Right now it's too loose, so I'm gonna turn this in clockwise a little bit, and I'm gonna get my pieces of material to sit parallel with each other, so the two edges, you should come over here, because you can't see that. Other side. Rookie. So these two edges are parallel with each other, which is good. If I can get this clamp back and out of the way so I don't weld it up to down, that's good. Then I'll clamp that up tight, okay? My material is now fixtured in place. It's not going to move, which is awesome for welding because what, you, what happens when you weld stuff is it heats really hot and it does move. Heat makes things expand, and then when they contract, they shrink fast, back past their normal position, and then they're warped, and you get a lot of that welding. So I've got my material fixtured. Welder's plugged in. Ground clamp is as close to my work as possible. In this case, just to keep it out of the way, I'm going to put it to the table, that's fine. Weld settings on the front here, I've got pretty much max thickness, and I've got the automatic setting for 030 wire thickness. That's all good. Gas is on. Of course, it's set a little high because everybody has these things cranked way up. I'm going to trim this off, and Ethan, you can come back over here and get close for some positioning stuff. Now, I naturally clamp this because I know I'm left-handed, so I want my left hand to be able to move freely like this and push well down this line. If I was right-handed, this would be maybe a little more difficult. I'd have to get over here and go like this, but yesterday a lot of you were still welding from behind the gun. You're standing here and you can't see the wire feeding out. I want you to get your face perpendicular to this gun so you can see the wire coming out and you can watch that weld puddle or bead form. Now, where should the uh, weld bead form? It should be focused on the bottom here. Zoom in really close, get good stuff should be focused on the base metal right here and then you're just going to dip up and grab the top metal and I'm going to half moon or semicircle right down the line okay so I'm going to go ahead and tack weld the two ends first which means I'm just going to put a slight spot or temporary weld on both ends if I didn't have this clamped it might move it's always good to tack weld have somebody check it and then full weld so this is a tack weld right here about a one second weld this helmet's not working. I think it's out of batteries. There's one. I'm going to go to the other end. Cover. Okay, and I've got two spots or tacks in place there. And now I'm ready to full weld this. So I'll go ahead and do that just to make it. I don't know how good it is for my camera to. Look away, camera. Yeah, don't. it's not good for the lens. I don't think it's good for it. Ready? I'll weld it quick. Then you can come back. So a couple things with this. This is really hot now. What do I do with it? Don't bring it to me and be like, Mr. Schulte, grade this. Bad. That's instant F if you hand it to me and it's molten hot. Uh, we normally have a quench pail over there that will start right next to the hose, which is just a five-gallon pail. Take another pliers that's not tethered to the table, carry it over there and quench it. How is my weld? It's decent. Not perfect as far as the pattern goes. But we can take a look at on the back side here. Oh, smoky gloves. We've got good heat penetration. And we looked at that as a word of the day the other day, and I can see that there's a, there's a um, change in the color of the metal. So I know I've got good heat through the backside. That's important that we've got enough heat. My pattern's pretty consistent, and I don't have an undercutting for the most part. There's a little bit of undercutting right here. Uh, 
drive a pin. Yeah, I do. Right here, there's a little bit of undercutting where it's kind of tucking underneath. But I've got pretty good wetting through here or flowing down into the base metal, and that's important. And I welded right over the top of my spot welds. I don't want to weld in between them like a field goal. I'm just going to burn right through them, okay? Uh, that is lap weld one-on-one. -on -one. Quench that, bring it over to me. I'll let you know where you're at for proficiency and grade. If you don't do well, you got another free shot on the backside. You blow it twice. Okay, let's figure out what you didn't do right. Get a couple more test pieces and set them up. Okay? Questions? And see.